We come together in an intentional relationship to create experiences. To create worlds, to create and recreate meaning based on our shared values. But what are these values? And more importantly, where are they in evidence? Our ultimate hope is that our values originate first and foremost in the depths of our souls so that they emerge and become evident in our behavior. We want our values to emerge from our souls and become evident in our behavior, but we have set before us no small task. We have set before us the ideal of the beloved community. And we have set before ourselves behavior that maintains the beloved community and souls that give birth to it. This is an ideal, and as an ideal, the beloved community is both ever away on the far horizon and always in our hearts. It is the now and the not yet. And this is known in my occupation as a calling. We are called. In our own voices, we are called. We are called by the ideal, and so we manufacture helpful guides and markers to amplify that song. We write and hear reflections. We craft missions and visions and enter into covenant. We produce principles and cite sources. We step into liturgy. We step into a rhythm of worship that hopefully reflects our values. And within that rhythm, we establish signs and rituals meant to resonate our values to us in the powerful language of the nonverbal. So you may consider our elements here on our altar. I don't think I've made explicit what our values, what of our values are represented in our elements that the children and I process in with each Sunday. And I would like to do that. And as you will see, it is not unimportant that each element points to and originates in community. So that is a very strong value running through all of them. Now every fall, in fact, next Sunday, so get your prescription bottles ready, everybody. <laughs> Next Sunday, we bring water from wherever we've been and whatever we've been through up to or about this summer. We bring water to church and ceremonially share the character of the experiences we had at its source. Whether that be the kitchen sink, 2,000 leagues under the sea, or the bathroom here at church, there's meaning to be found and shared. And we share our character and experience and integrate those into one another in the bowl as a symbol of our community and our mingling and the shaping of character that takes place there. Incidentally, as a universal solvent, water is the most formative force on the planet. And another shared characteristic of water and community, both are excellent conductors of electricity, of energy. So we carry in the symbol of our gathered power to shape and be mingled and to move energy. And we put it in a special place in the center of our gathering. In November, we come back together for another communion, this one not of water, but of soil. Soil is the stuff from which the web of existence is made. It is the root home, seedbed, and final rest and recreation 
of all life. Soil is the fertile silence of the churning earth. And so fittingly, we bring soil not from where we've been, but right from where we are. And we share this in, in much the same manner as water communion, only in silence. It is good to be silent together. Thereby we indulge each other's internal life. As well as our creative decompositions. Our chosen silences and our inherent dignity. We do so in community, which means in care and accountability. We then use that soil to bear the flame we use to light the chalice. We carry the flame from the back to the altar in our soil, on top of our soil. And that flame points to our larger tradition and the history of that tradition. For this symbol is employed, the flaming chalice, in most all UU congregations and was born of the fight to free the oppressed and embrace the outcast. This was during the life-destroying regimes in Europe leading up to World War II that this symbol was developed. And today, whether oppression is political or spiritual imposed from the state or from our own hearts, when we light this chalice, we signal that our holy time opens into hopes of freedom and home. The fire is brought in on the soil that is held, by the way, by a bowl crafted by one of our members and broken on my very first day in this pulpit. <laughs> to me, this is a beautiful and organic symbolic reminder about community. To me, this, this means that uh, even a broken bowl can hold us. Even a broken heart can hold love. Even imperfect community can hold the ideal. So that's soil and fire and water, but what of air? It's difficult to bring air in. So where is air in our procession as the children and I come in every Sunday? Well, that's why we come in to you singing. The air is in the bellows of our hymn, a communal endeavor if there ever was one. So taking together our processional represents the four fundamental elements and honors the ancient earth-centered religions. They also acknowledge the ecosystem and its theological addition, the interdependent web of existence. Further, I would say that the naturalistic symbols also bow to the science which informs us about them. In other words, in our little processional, we are acknowledging the broadest outlines of our sources, as well as symbolic representations of our values and our community. Did you know all that was going on in this 30 feet? That's what we're doing. That's what we're bringing in every Sunday. And you know, it's meaningful that it's carried in by children. As children are the hope for the future and the reason why we must work to create a good future and a healthy present. And so our elements represent hope and a reason to work as they are carried in by the children. The elements are the hope of our ideal of our now and not yet, of what is always on the horizon while ever in our hearts. Our elements call us in and lead us on in community where how we relate determines the world. How we relate determines how the world appears. How we relate determines how we experience it. And so in this way, how we relate determines the world. Not how we see, how we relate. Seeing is uh, subjective and objective. 
But relating is intersubjective. Relating is a two-way street. Relating is an exchange. And so how we exchange with all we encounter respect due to all we encounter and ourselves. How we exchange with all we encounter determines the world. Meaning is made in the in-between. The quality of meaning in our lives depends on the quality of our in-betweens. <coughs> quality of the meaning in our lives depends on the quality of our exchange with life. For while meaning is created, while meaning is not given, life is given. The world is given. It is there without our say-so. The world is given, life is given, we are given. How lucky. What grace we are made of. And so may our relationships be led by gratitude. This observation that we are given, and so let us be graceful, this observation leads us to a real noodle baker. For if we are given, and if we are the meaning-making apparatus of the cosmos, then perhaps meaning is given. If we are given and we automatically make meaning in the in-between, if we are given and we are an automatic outgrowth of everything that has come before, our, inevitably, our inevitability borne out in our being, if we are given, then perhaps meaning is given through us. Maybe meaning is a part of the fabric of the cosmos and we are merely its lens, cloudy and warped as we may be. So whatever the case, may, our, may the lens of our living be framed by gratitude. May the lens of our living be tempered and shaped by our values. May we be reminded of our values in word, song, and symbol so that our liturgy of worship shapes us as individuals and as a community. May we thereby be called into beauty, that state of Relating in love, shared power, connection, and harmony. Maybe we be, may we be called by the power of our shared meaning in air and water and soil and fire. By our broken hearts that carry on together. May we be called by our beloved community.